anxiety. <laughs> All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome or welcome back to the Kia Hyundai channel. My name's Gabby. And I'm Charlotte. And today we're talking about the 2024 Kia Sportage EX all-wheel drive non-hybrid. This is the gas model. And Charlotte, why is this video so exciting? Ooh, this video <laughs> is incredibly exciting because it's an EX, it's a 2024, and we think that the EX is an excellent place to start when you're looking at your V, <laughs> excellent place to start when you're looking at your vehicle search. We're gonna go through um, this vehicle because we generally think that the EX trims across the board are known for excellent value. I'm gonna keep doing that this whole video. Yep. <laughs> and it can generally be a great place to start if you are looking during your car search. So that way you have a base mark. And if you know that you want more features, you can look upwards. And if you want less, then you can certainly move downwards too. Absolutely. So today we're gonna give you the full walkthrough interior and exterior, as well as mention some things that truly make the EX worth jumping towards and what make might make it the excellent choice for you and your family. I do want to give a quick shout out to my customers who are actually located all the way out in Ottawa that purchased this vehicle from us. Woo! We're so excited to deliver it to you, excited to deliver it to you, and we hope you love it just as much as we love the Sportage EX. And for those of you who are watching, yes, we are located in Brantford, Ontario, but yes, if you live in Ontario, we do deliver. Yes, anywhere in Ontario, we have a truck and trailer and we're happy to assist you. Now, I will also mention, with that being said, we're a real dealership. Mm -hmm. We actually have three real dealerships, one being a Kia. It's it's Brantford Kia where we film every single day. We talk about a lot of Kias and that's where you can actually find me and Charlotte working. But on top of that, we also have two Hyundai stores, Brantford Hyundai, which is about 10 minutes down the road and Owen Sound Hyundai, which is about three hours up north, three-ish. Eh. Yeah, eh, give or take. Roughly. So we have all these stores that can service just about all throughout Ontario. However, we're stuck in Ontario. We cannot sell outside of Ontario, Canada. Mm -hmm. Womp womp. womp womp. <laughs> now with that being said, I think it's probably time to jump right in and let's talk about the Sportage EX. So I'll have Charlotte Perfect. grab the camera. I'm gonna start off with the exterior as well as the powertrain information. Let us know if you guys have any questions, whether it be about this trim level Sportage, this exact car, or any other future vehicles. You can add them in our type chat box below and we'll answer them towards the end of today's live stream. I always like starting off with the engine, so let's take a look. Under the hood is a 2.5 liter four cylinder gasoline engine with an MPI injection as well too. So you have GDI and MPI combined. With that, you have 187 horsepower with 178 pound feet of torque and 2000 pounds of towing capacity when properly equipped. Uh, we'll take a closer look in a second. You may also notice for our headlights, we have a full LED headlight unit with fog lights. Now, if you are set on getting fog lights on your brand new Kia Sportage, Gotta break it to you. You have to get the EX model or above. So fog lights are only included on this trim and up. You also get this beautiful glossy black grille, which I think adds to a nice, nice, more so urban or sleek styling element as opposed to something like the X line, which takes a more rugged approach. The LED headlights definitely make a difference. They are extremely bright and have a very sharp cutoff. You also have intelligent high beam assist, meaning that when you turn on your high beams, this vehicle will actually shut them off. It's if it senses another vehicle approaching or if it senses enough ambient light around you, let's say you enter a city or somewhere where there's enough light. For the wheels, exclusive to the EX, you get these 18 inch alloys. You get a mix of dark and light accents, which truly stand out with the rest of the design language on the vehicle. You'll see a lot of piano black on the X outside and inside with some nice aluminum accents as well too. For our mirrors, we do have a turn signal indicator. And then on the actual mirror portion, you take a look, we have our blind spot detection illumination. So essentially when there's a vehicle in either my left or right blind spot, the corresponding mirror will illuminate to let me know there's a car there. On top of that, it takes a next step up. When you do um, indicate a turn, either left or right, it will beep inside the cabin to let you know there's a car there and not to change lanes. And then even further, it'll actually revert you into your original lane if you start to defer into the next lane. Whew, lots of talking. <laughs> you can see we have more light accents tying in with our dark, flush roof rails, and those are of course functional. There's a couple things that are kind of exterior and interior. Charlotte will show you a better look once we get inside, but you get a panoramic roof on the EX, which I know is a big thing for a lot of our customers. And you also get a beautiful synthetic leather interior. On the back, we do have an, uh, <laughs> it's still really wet. We have a hydraulic lift. Um, and you can see back here, there is a ton of space. So the Sportage in true Kia fashion, it's always been equipped with five seats. Um, with the rear seats completely up, you can see there's still so, so much room and those do fold down and they have a very, very easy way of knocking them down. You can do it right from your trunk. So there are levers on both the left and right side. Give it a pull, folds right down. Now the only thing you gotta do is hop in 
or go to the side and lock them into place. And now it's almost completely flat. If you do have pets back here or crates or just any sort of furniture or luggage you need to move around, you can make this truly almost a pickup truck, compact pickup. Underneath your floorboard, you do have more storage space and a compact spare tire. So great peace of mind, especially if you are doing long road trips with this vehicle, maybe using it as a commuter car. It's great to have an actual spare tire. Charlotte, I'm so sorry. The great. The great, yeah. <laughs> Our floor is not meant for high heels and we typically wear those. You got very nice shoes on today, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> now Charlotte actually drives a Kia Sportage, so I'm gonna have her talk about the trunk space for a second. All right, so I get to pop in here. Now, I know it can always be difficult to pick up on camera, but the amount of space back here is actually deceiving. There is more than you think, and you would be incredibly surprised at what you could fit back here. Mm -hmm. So for a little bit of context, the things that I pretty much always have in my trunk is I always keep my reusable bags down here, and I just shove them in right along with the spare tire because it's super uh, easy to grab them on the go, and that way I don't have them cluttering up the back. But I can also fit my stroller, I can fit a pack and play, and I can also fit a bin or bag of toys back here and all of my groceries. So that sounds like a lot. And if you're thinking, wow, that's you keep a lot of stuff in your trunk, Charlotte. Yes, I do. And it's because I actually have the capacity to do so, which is great. What I also like is that this is incredibly lightweight while still being a relatively hardy material. So even if I do have stuff um, like my stroller and pack and play on here, I can still lift it up and I can still access what is underneath to get more reusable bags if I need them. And that's real world experience. <laughs> Coming up to the side, we have our fuel door on the left side of the vehicle. It is a push one. So all you gotta do is give it a push. And as long as the vehicle is unlocked, it'll pop right open. Once you lock your car though, this door, you're unable to open it. So no worries there. Styling again, the EX definitely adds a more stylish or sleek city element to it, as opposed to things like the LX, which is gonna look a little bit more basic or the X line, which is gonna look a little bit more rugged or off-road styled. Um, I really like the EX and the EX premium styling approach. Let me know what you guys think. And then one more thing I wanna show is just the front without the hood open, of course, so you can see the total look, or the complete look. So lots of black elements again. I wanna say almost like an eyeliner effect. The way it showcases our beautiful bright LED headlights, it just really makes everything pop and more bold. Um, for safety, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about our safety systems. With the EX trim, you're gonna get an advanced version of your forward collision avoidance. What that means is not only is it gonna pick up cars in front of you, it's also gonna pick up pedestrians and cyclists and even work in junction. So if I'm making a left at a busy intersection, it'll pick up cars coming in the opposing lane, warn me if there's a risk of a collision and even break for me if the distance to collision is greatly closing in and I'm not reacting. So this car is always looking out for you. And even further, you have smart cruise control, which is gonna allow you to set your cruise control speed and distance and your car will keep you at a safe distance from the car ahead of you all the way up until stop and go traffic which is very nice to have and then our windshield is heated and our Woo. washers or washers oh my goodness wiper blades are automatic so rain sensing wiper blades you don't have to think much with this car <laughs> i'll grab the camera from charlotte and we'll take a look at the interior now Perfect. So let's hop on inside. First thing that we get to notice is that we do have a proximity key with this vehicle. So simple click of the button, it's unlocked and you are able to get inside. You can also see that we have a nice, nice leather seating when it comes to our driver's seat. And we also have multiple different ways to configure the seat. So you know that if you are driving in this vehicle, you are going to be able to set it very comfortably. And the addition of lumbar support is always excellent to have. It just gives you that little bit of extra stability, um, especially for someone like me where I feel like I just sit in my car with the heated seats on all the time just as a comfort mechanism and this definitely adds to that, especially because I do drive a Sportage and I love doing so too. When it comes to the side of the door, there's not too much going on. Uh, we do have a little bit more of glossy black accents, some soft touch leather, and then of course we have our controls for our mirror and also for our windows. Mm -hmm. The passenger and the driver's window, they are um, automatic. Oh, well, they'll, well, my apologies, they are all automatic, uh, but these ones, they are, um, Oh, Gabby, the word's escaping from my mind. Um, express. Thank you. Express <laughs> windows. Uh, down at the bottom, of course, we have multiple pockets there. You can put your water bottle in there. Also some other small items for safekeeping. Now I'll let Gabby give a pan over of the cabin because one of the excellent features that we have starting on the EX, an excellent feature, is we have the introduction of the two larger screens. Oh, I'm focused on the sunroof. Okay, oh. there we go. <laughs> 
<laughs> we also have a panoramic sunroof, which Gabby mentioned, and now you guys got a sneak peek of that too. So lots of different um, high-end tech features and convenience features that we see in this car, which is why we also think it is a great place to start because if you like having um, the most convenient tech and safety features with little touches of luxury, this is going to be the great place to start. And then depending on what your personal tastes are, if you want more, if you want less, you have lots of margin to do so with the different trims. So let's hop inside. Gabby, I'll have you come around if you'd like. For sure. One more shot at the wheels. Oh, our gimbal's freaking out. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> um, someone did mention that the headlights are almost boomerang style, and yep. So you can see, almost an arrow-like or boomerang. Hey, Charlotte. Hey, <laughs> welcome to the Sportage. <laughs> okay, so first things first, as I mentioned, you can see these two beautiful big screens up close. So your media screen that is 12.3 uh, inches. And then for your center, we do have a digital um, cluster with the only screen that's really customizable per se or able to change is going to be the cent one in the middle. It's 4.2 inch TFT LCD, all of those acronyms. <laughs> whatever <laughs> that, that we see means. On this yeah, whatever that means. <laughs> all of the acronyms that we see on this vehicle. So um, if anyone is looking for an idea of potential range, this vehicle, of course, it has not been driven. There's only 27 kilometers on it, but it is showing for 590 kilometers uh, for your gasometer, for your digital fuel gauge. Now, of course, that is going to change depending on how you drive your vehicle. And one of the contributing factors to um, your fuel economy is also going to be the addition of the drive and the terrain modes. So in this vehicle, we have three drive modes. We have normal, sport, and smart, each of which are going to um, change the shift configuration of the vehicle depending on uh, if you want it to be a little bit more sporty or if you want to get the most of your fuel economy and use smart mode to switch in between those different modes. As a Sportage driver I actually use these and I cycle between all of them. Um, generally I keep my vehicle in smart mode but especially if I'm on the highway I do like to put it into sport and have a little bit more fun. When it comes to terrain modes we also have three. If you're in the US, there's a solid chance that you don't have these, um, but here in Canada we do. We have snow, mud, and sand, and what these do is they use um, your powertrain, they use the traction control to pretty much reduce the amount of slippage <laughs> that you may have depending on the inclement weather that you have encountered. So In your sportage. In your sportage. <laughs> in other words, they help reduce wheel spin. <laughs> So for the steering wheel, we can talk about that. It's, it's leather wrapped and in this vehicle, it it's also heated. is heated. I was just uh, looking to double check that. <laughs> so you know that it's going to be very comfortable. Um, also, of course, you have your driving or your driving controls on this side with your um, convenience and media controls on the other side with your digital assistant. If you do not, if you have not played around with your digital assistant, I highly recommend you do so because there are so many things that it can do that you may not anticipate. For example, it could turn on your heated seats if you want. So how cool is that? I think we have to do a video on it. I think I think we should do a video on what you can do with your virtual assistant, what mm -hmm. you can't do. So super, super fun uh, playing around in your vehicle. Let's actually talk about the screen because something that is super excellent that this vehicle has is not only does it of course have radio, it does have the capacity for Sirius radio. So if you love Sirius XM satellite radio, you can actually use that in this vehicle. It starts on the EX, so you cannot, if that's something that is a uh, non-negotiable for you, you're gonna wanna look at the EX. Also, this is where we have the start of navigation. So you have integrated navigation in this vehicle in addition with your smart cruise control. So that way, if you do not have a lot of data on your phone, you don't need to worry about wasting that. You can do it just from the convenience of your vehicle. Woohoo. Oh, let's full screen it. And there you just saw Sirius XM. Yes. <laughs> also, I will point out, if you are in an area that you're unfamiliar with, it shows you points of interest and there's actually a menu that shows you um, all the different options you can search for. If you don't really know what you're looking for, so if you want a cafe or something fast food or a real restaurant, you can search that very easily. Mm -hmm. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Mm -hmm. uh, the start on the, uh, the oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Starting on this vehicle is you also have the introduction of Kia Connect. Uh, so that is Kia's telematic system. Gabby went and pointed out that we do have a heated windshield in this vehicle. You can't really see it from here, but there are um, some tungsten filaments running throughout the vehicle. Um, you can see them if you are looking up close, probably not on camera. Even though I drive this vehicle, I don't even notice them anymore. 
But what is great is if you are using the telematic system is you can start the heated windshield process from your phone, but then you can also heat the cabin of your vehicle of the cabin of your vehicle, turn on your heated seats, everything like that. That way, once you get in, it is nice and toasty and comfortable and you can just drive away, not having to do that waiting period of your vehicle, uh, <laughs> of uh, your vehicle heating up for you. Yep. Now, let's talk about the real showstopper in this vehicle. Let's look upwards at our beautiful panoramic sunroof. Five hours later. So it's hard to believe that this is a mid line trim looking at this beautiful sunroof because this is such a luxurious feature and adds a little bit of extra oomph to this vehicle so like i said it's convenient but it has those little touches of luxury that i just love and i think is excellent from a design standpoint too mm -hmm. so i guess i should finish talking about what we see here but um, of course in the center this is standard on all of our sportages you have your um, climate and then also your media controls down at the bottom you can see we have a wireless phone charger 12 volt USB and USB-C for charging, and then some other features framed in here in piano black, your heated seats, your heated steering wheel. And then if we look more to where our drive modes and train modes are located, you can see we have downhill parking assist, auto hold, idle stop and go, your rear view camera. Braking which, assist. Re, yes. <laughs> uh, which you can see our tailgate is currently up. <laughs> so you can see that it's pointed towards the sky and then also our parking sensors if you'd like to turn them on or off. So other than that, of course, you've got your cup holders, which Ooh. shoot out nice and fancy. I just obliterated the key there. I'm sorry, customer. And it's it's fine, don't worry. <laughs> I think I'll quickly talk about the key while it's here. And this is the topic of discussion. So this is um, Kia Smart Key Vehicle. Um, and essentially it's a push to start, meaning that as long as the key is somewhere in the vehicle, oh my gosh, I'm so used to the push to starts being over there. I know. And the Sportage is our only car that has it here. Right there. Um, as long as the key is somewhere in the vehicle, it will start. Um, you can also enter the vehicle without actually touching your key, but you may want to use it because you have incorporated remote start. All you have to do is hit the lock button and then press and hold remote start, and then it starts for you. I genuinely, genuinely use that feature every single day. Yeah. Multiple times a day. It doesn't matter if I'm leaving the dealership. doesn't matter if I'm leaving my house. I'm using remote start all the time. I absolutely love it. Um, I did quickly see a, oh, I can't even pull it back up now, but I'll someone said something about the CVT's engine reliability and the CVT, CVT is typically a transmission, not an engine. Yeah. So I Question? can't, I can't answer that. <laughs> now, if you are asking if this vehicle comes with this CVT and what CVT reliabilities are like, this vehicle does not have a CVT. It mm -hmm. is a regular eight speed automatic transmission. So a traditional automatic transmission with a torque converter. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, super fun to drive. Yes, <laughs> it's very responsive. All right, um, does this Sportage come with the auto park feature? It does not. No, it does not. Are we checking out the back? Yeah, should we check yeah. out the back seat? Sure. Good. I think we've covered most of our bases up here, so. Okay. Oh, and just because we have it, here's our Ooh. window sticker which goes over the price of the vehicle. You can see the MSRP. We literally just got a question saying, what is the price? So Sanjeev, this is for you. Base price is $37,295. That is before taxes and fees. Of course, there are some things like excise tax, freight, color, um, and then of course, HST, depending on your province. But yeah. Okay, so now we're sitting in the back seat. Hopefully you guys even got a little sneak of how easy it is to lower and raise these seats when I was opening them up or raising them up. Now, if it looks like I'm sitting pretty straight back, I am, but don't worry, they actually can recline for you. This is it all the way back, so I'm gone now. <laughs> but there are, uh, you can definitely sit comfortably back here and you can fit three people comfortably back here. Um, when it comes to design and convenience features in the back, we do have rear vents. We also have a rear pocket, so if you'd like to put your phone in there or any small items, you definitely can. And it's perfect because we also have two USB-Cs in the back. So if you want to have it plugged in and your phone resting down there, you can do so without fear of it getting lost. We also have some coat hooks or little bag hooks here with our headrests doubling as coat hooks or bag hooks too, bag hooks too and two leather pockets for privacy. In the center, you already know it, we have our armrest and we have two cup holders here, perfect. And then also here is the angle from the middle seat. 
Now, of course, when you have a sunroof, especially one this large as you do lose a little bit of headroom, but it's not generally a concern. Um, as a Sportage owner, I've had taller people back here. I've had people who are over six foot back here and uh, they have not hit their head. They have not been cramped. They have still had the adequate space. But with that being said is usually if someone is taller, I try to offer up the passenger seat or one of the other seats to them. But even if they are back here, they do fit. So if that is a concern for you, hopefully that alleviates it. Um, I had someone ask those tiny coat hanger hooks. They must be for small coats. Uh, baby coats. <laughs> baby coats. And I would probably more so use those for shopping bags yeah. and this for a coat. That way it's not like tumbling all over the back seat. Yes. I've also wrapped my charger around it too. Yeah, that's so smart. If, I'm, if it's not in use. So mm -hmm. these are all the random things mm -hmm. I've experimented with. Ian asked if the passenger seat can be raised up and down, and unfortunately it cannot. The only adjustments are either how close or how far it is from the dash, utilizing this bar, or the angle of recline at the back of the seat, utilizing this lever. Um, I did see Adele say that it's a CVT. In Canada, none of the Sportages incorporate a CVT or an IVT transmission. You do get, let's see, our eight-speed automatic transmission right over there. All right. <laughs> all right, all right. Oh, and our lights just went out too. Yeah. We'll turn those back on. Okay, let's answer some questions and see what you guys have to say about the Kia Sportage. We'll try not to get that EV6 in it too much. Although the EV6 is a great car. Very great. Car. Very, very different vehicles. Different vehicles. <laughs> that yes, would be quite sure. the comparison if I we did that today. I will say their styling is kind of similar. The EV6 is almost like a squished down Sportage. Mm, I see what you mean. Kind of, not really. <laughs> I think the biggest thing is that Kia has been redesigning a lot of their front ends and their yes. headlights, so that's been a, a big change. They're making them a little bit more mm -hmm. distinct. Um, why do you guys think the American market charges so much more above MSRP, but you guys do not charge above MSRP? I'm so jealous. I pay 533 US dollars a month for a Forte GT line. That's, that's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. <laughs> it's a lot of money. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with, so there are quite a few dealerships here in Canada that do charge over MSRP just because they can, because inventory is still something that is scarce mm -hmm. and it's a seller's market, unfortunately. Um, our store chooses not to do that. So while we totally could, we don't because we don't want to. Yeah, we just, it's hard enough to get vehicles as it is and it's been a crazy time. So uh, let's not make it difficult. <laughs> yeah. Um, and to answer your question, they do it because they can pretty much. It's not right, it's not fair, but they do it because look, they can get away with it. Mm -hmm. Which is not, not good. Which isn't fun. It's not no. a great answer to give. Yes. Um, and Joseph, so Joseph actually works for a Hyundai dealership in the States, said, search around. We don't charge a penny over MSRP. So awesome. see, there's good dealerships there out there. There are dealerships out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is something that Gabby and I have talked about at length, but uh, we're thinking about, I know we've mentioned it a couple times yeah. about starting a podcast potentially in the new year. And one of the topics that we wanted to address was how do you pick a good dealer? Yes. And obviously you search Brantford Kia. Yeah. <laughs> obviously Brantford Kia should be your top search result. <laughs> And we'll try to get back to answering some Sportage questions. I know there was quite a few, like quite a lot when we went through it. Unfortunately now, YouTube, the streaming app is so strange. It doesn't let me scroll as we're filming. Yeah. So we can't see things Yes, anymore. you can. It didn't let me today. Oh. You know how for a while all, everything would cluster together? You, if, it, if it leaves, Only you just... Only if there was a current one. Oh, okay. But then once this disappeared, it was gone. Oh. So I don't know. <laughs> keep commenting then. Yeah, keep commenting. <laughs> um, Bulletin Blair said, any idea what will replace the soul? And I'm sure it'll be an EV. Now, I don't think it'll go under the sole nameplate. No. Just uh, Kia's changing their nameplates to, you know, numbers and letters. Uh, elements. <laughs> elements, yes. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. More on that later. <laughs> um, let's see. This will be my very, very first winter driving in Canada, and I'm sure I've chosen the best choice with this Sportage all-wheel drive. Great yes. choice. <laughs> Great choice. So those terrain modes. Charlotte, you've driven the Sportage in the winter. I've been there. I've done that. You're not going to have a problem. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do actually put snow tires on my vehicle, but I actually did not in January. Mm -hmm. um, I did not have them on until I got, I drove a different Sportage <laughs> in January and now I drive a different Sportage. And She uh, likes the Sportage. I love the Sportage. <laughs> Um, but I had no problem um, driving without snow tires too. But I did use snow mode. I definitely utilized that. Um, Hollywood57 asked a question that I'm trying to understand. Um, can you answer why they don't have the front sensor on the inside front 
windshield instead of the lower front center of the vehicle? So they do kind of have one in the front, it's in the windshield mm -hmm. where your camera is. And some of our lower trim level vehicles are gonna utilize that camera for their forward collision avoidance. However, it is not as effective mm -hmm. as our actual radar plate that you'll see on the front of this vehicle, which I'll quickly show you. Because I realize you probably can't see it from there. A lot of people also ask how the license plate works with a radar plate, but. Yeah, so they're separate. Yep, you can see our license plate's higher than the radar plate itself. Whenever you see a vehicle like this, um, this typically indicates that the vehicle has a smart cruise control function or an advanced forward collision avoidance function. Our vehicles that have the camera located right over here, which is going to be super hard to film. You can see it in the center. Usually that works for your standard forward collision avoidance and your lane keep and lane follow assist, but it's not as um, accurate. Not, I shouldn't say accurate, but as, as advanced as our radar. So we do both. Um, let's see. Sorry to keep asking, kick down switch on the accelerator. I know some have it where you have the accelerator to the floor, but then there's that extra kick down if you push a little bit harder. I don't know how, I have a baby in my car. I don't know how often you think I'm putting the pedal to the metal, my friend. <laughs> um, we can step on it here. Let's try it here. Okay. Do you want to do it or you want me to do it? You go for it. Okay. I can film you. Okay. Now, again, oh. the car is not in drive, or else that'd be a big issue. <laughs> <laughs> Goes through the wall online. It wouldn't be the first time something with, we actually had a sea do like, you know, the personal watercraft go through that wall. Not completely, but pretty close. Okay. I was ready to turn the engine on. <laughs> okay, I'm put my seat down, bring it up a little bit. I'm trying not to get too close, because because feet, because <laughs> there's people um, there. There's also the brake pedal in the way, but. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's how far it goes. So there's no extra kick down. It's just, it just ends. It's the way it, it goes. Just ends. It just ends. There is an end. <laughs> right, there's also a horn going off in our back yeah, lot. Yeah, someone must be looking for a vehicle. <laughs> as long as it's not this one. <laughs> Oh, we've had that happen. Yeah. Would not be the first time. It's terrifying too. I think that happened on one of her live streams. Yeah. Um, let's see. Nice shoes. Gabby blows through the wall. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Someone's stealing a car. Oh, I hope not. Could you imagine if there was actually someone like out there trying to steal a car and people were like, hey, turn around. Turn around. Terrifying. <laughs> yeah, you guys would let us know, right? <laughs> Um, let's see, how's the weather up there? Sorry I joined late, does this trim have the panoramic sunroof? You better believe it does. It's actually the entry level of the Kia Sportage to feature the panoramic sunroof. Mm -hmm. So if you want a sunroof and you want some great tech and comfort features, but you don't want to spend the top dollar on the top trim, get this one. The EX is the best value by far. Um, let's see. Gabby, do you have any idea when the 2024 Sonata will be available? So the 2024 Sonata is actually gonna be one of our harder cars to film. Um, we haven't gotten a real solid date. And once again, I am at our Kia store. I don't get all our Hyundai news. But last time I remember Mike talking about late to mid 2024 is when mm. we'll actually start rolling out, which I thought it would be late 2023, which we're in right now, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but no, that's not the case. So stay tuned. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe in that case. Yeah. Because um, we will be filming it as soon as we can, but the wait time is, we still got a little bit of waiting to go for mm -hmm. sure. A Here's one. Bit. Seeing these reports on poor EV, EV sales this past year, is there any cause for concern for the future of the EV market? Mm -hmm. um, I think, I don't think it's necessarily the demand that has slowed down. It's more so the allocation. Um, and if Pat was here, he usually can speak a little bit more to that because he yeah. gets the the inside inside scoop, mm -hmm. as Gabby put it a couple a couple weeks ago. He we gets the real inside. We, scoop. we only get the inside scoop. We get, we get the crumbs. <laughs> but um, we know that we are going to be seeing more in 2024, at least coming through our store um, and generally through Ontario um, as a whole. Mm -hmm. And it's just we do have a slower allocation, but I don't think the sales have necessarily slowed down, especially with some new incentives coming in. And um, yeah. I think just more product being pushed too. Yeah.
so much more new exciting EVs being released as well too. Mm -hmm. We, um, yeah. Um, I think that's probably it for today's live when it comes to questions. We are around 30 minute mark. Now again, we go live every single weekday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if we didn't make it clear, we are a real dealership. We're three real dealerships. And if you are actually looking for a new Kia or used Kia or Hyundai product, we can help you out. So any of our three stores would be happy to assist you. Make sure you won't charge over, you're not charged over MSRP and you walk away with the vehicle that you love, that you got a ton of experience about online on YouTube. Woo! -hoo. Woo! <laughs> so honestly, we're truly a one-stop shop. We like to think so. Research everything. <laughs> yeah. Purchase. Delivery. Um, we could take care of everything. Just contact us. I will have a link below in our description if you are in the market for a vehicle or if you just have any questions, we're happy to assist. And then again, we hope to see you on another video. Until then. Until then. Ciao, Bye. ciao for now. <laughs> Bye.